This is a tutorial for creating Word templates. And the first thing that you need to do is to go to Admin MS Word. You will see three different options. The first one just gives patient demographic fields, so address, insurance information, things like that. The scheduled template file adds appointment information. And the records template file gives patient demographics and a medical records field. But if you click this, it'll open up Word and start scrolling out these um, files. And what you'll get, uh, once uh, that file is generated, if you save it and try to open it again, you'll get this warning. And that's fine, just hit yes. Okay, so this is what would be the output from that generate template file. These are just labels um, that Crystal puts in there. This is the actual field code. This grayed out area um, is what we're looking for. The demographic codes have names in them, but the medical record codes, if we go, this is field ID 50, 51, 52, 53, and then I believe way down at the bottom, these ones that end in A, I believe those are the ARA fields, but I'm not positive on that. Anyway, when you go to make a document, you need to copy and paste these fields, particularly the demographic fields up here, because they have the information that Word needs to uh, grab the data out of the Crystal database. The medical record ones, basically it's just the field ID number, so you can um, just copy one of these and paste it in your form and then edit it. But you can't edit this part here. To edit the actual field, you need to right click in the box and select Edit Field. Uh, the field name is MC21. This is what you have to edit to change the data that's coming in. Okay. Um, if you change it on the uh, just on here, it won't do anything. Now you can also put text that you want to show up before the field, text that you want to show up after field. You can also control the output of the data that you bring in. You know, for example, Crystal stores a check box as a yes, Y-E-S, all caps. If you want it to be a lowercase, you can select lowercase and it'll convert it to that. Or you can do first letter capitalized or if it's multiple words, you can do title case where the, the first letter of each word is capitalized. There's also some custom um, programming that you can do with these fields. There's switches that can control the date formats and time formats and things like that, too. Um, but that goes way beyond what, I'm, what we're talking about here. If, if you really want to do um, more advanced stuff, I've got, a link, I've got some links on my how-to document on the site. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention, you want to go to Word Options and hit Display and make sure it's checked here, Update Fields Before Printing, and go to Advanced, down to Show Document Content, and Field Shading, I would recommend, oh, hit OK. That refers to this, this graying out of this field. If you have it set to always, you can see where your merged data is coming from and where your fixed text is. Okay, I've got two templates here because I want to show you different ways that you can handle the formatting and how it affects the output. First thing you have to do is decide how you want to lay out your form and what fields you want. Okay, and to me, the um, demographic fields, it's probably easiest just to copy those off of the generated template and paste them into your merge document. But on the medical records field, trying to find the medical record, the right medical records field is going to take you forever. So what I would do is just copy, you can copy any field, one of these or a medical record field, paste it into the document, and then just right click edit the field, and come over here, say I want 88. I change it to 88, and there it is. Okay, and I'll show you if I change it here, it was 101. If I change it there, it doesn't work. 
if I edit this, it still says 88. Okay, so this is just like a shortcut code. Um, it's it's not the actual coding for that field. All right, so I've got this one mainly set up as just individual lines with a tab to push the push the field over kind of in a column format. Okay, and to put um, if you have a tab, you can move it around. If they're all the same, you can grab a bunch and move a bunch together. To insert a tab somewhere, you can just click on here. If you see over here, there's an L. That means if you click on the ruler, it's going to put a left tab in that position. So basically, I've just got the, the labels and the fields. Over here, I wanted um, the BVA and the pinhole because I realize that maybe not everybody I'm going to have a, a BVA on. But the only thing that I store is the denominator of the acuity. So I put BVA OD 20 slash, and then I put the, uh, the field for the right eye acuity in there. And then BVA OS and the um, field for that one, and so on. Now, on here, it looks like this is flowing over into two lines. But it's just because this data takes up a lot more room than 20 or 200 or 400, whatever. So if it was the right, if, if data was actually in there, this all would fit on one line. This is just naturally word wrapped to the next line. If I had hit an enter key after this, then that 20 uh, slash MC274 would be on the next line. But as long as it's just naturally flows through word wrap, it will format properly when you get the actual data in there. Okay, same thing, I've got OD, OS, at, notes, I've got that outside, I've just got the fields on here. Okay, then on the assessment, I've got two different formats because I want to show how they work differently. Uh, this is a table, and you can tell it's a table because if you're clicked on this row, you see these little uh, blue marks here. That's an indication of row height. Okay, so whenever you see something like that, that means it's a table. Here I did the same thing, only I lined them up with commas and spaces in between the fields. And then for plan, I've got this is the, my plan, and then I also have fields for RTC and a reason. And I have a checkbox field that I check when I take photos. I am putting it here as a yes, which is how Crystal exports it, but I wanted to show you how the checkboxes work. So another way that you can see the actual code is to either click on an individual field and hit Shift F9. Okay, and you see it says merge field MC underscore doc. All right, and so that's the actual code that tells it what to what data to pull into that position. You can hit Shift F F9 and that turns it off again. Okay, the other one is alternate F9. And that shows all the fields for all the pages. In this mode, you could potentially go in and manually edit these. If you copy and pasted the same generic field on all these places, and you could come through and say, this is 101, this is 86, 87, 88. You could manually edit it in here without going to right-click edit and, and doing it there. I also want to show you while we're here, this is how the coding is done for, the, for a checkbox. Okay. To do a checkbox, you have to do an if command. So you go wherever you want the checkbox, and you hit Control F9, and that inserts these little curly brackets. You cannot type these yourself. You have to get them in there by hitting Control F9. Okay. Then I'm going to delete this and just show you what we type in here. Okay, so then you type if. And then you copy the field that you want to, you know, to pull the checkbox data from, whatever your checkbox field is. And then you say, you type if, and quote, capital Y-E-S, quote, and then you have a space, and then you put in quotes, the, and you, you put in the image, the symbol that you want to be printed or displayed if the checkbox uh, is is checked, okay? And then you put another space and in quotes the symbol that you want if it's not checked, okay? 
So how the if command works is it says if this condition is met, if merge field 1014 is equal to yes, then you put an, this symbol. Otherwise, you use this symbol. Okay, and you can just you can you go to this spot and you click uh, insert symbol, and you could use this or you, you know whatever you want to use for for the check state, and then you do it again for the unchecked state. Okay, so that's how if how the checkboxes work. One other thing, sometimes you put in fields, you save the file, you open it back up, and they're not there, and you know they're there. If you merge a document, they show up in the document, but you can't see the field on your Word template. And it seems to happen particularly with checkboxes. This template actually has that same checkbox, but it's not showing up. But if I hit F9, you can see that that code is in there. Why it doesn't show up, I don't have a clue, but it happens um, frequently. So remember that little tip. A couple other things. If, if you have a blank line like this with no, no text in it, just feel. If all of those are empty, then that line will be ignored. There won't be a gap there for that line. If this is entered as, a, as what's called a page break, if you finish this line and you hit the Enter key, to go to the next line. If you do what's called a line break, where you do shift enter, then it will be displayed even if it's blank. Same thing goes for the fields themselves. Anytime a field is empty, then it won't put anything in that spot. It'll just move everything over. But that doesn't happen with tables. If this one is empty, these two are empty, you only have two diagnoses, there will still be a gap here where these rows were. Okay. The other thing about tables is that table cells will wrap and keep the data in that zone. Let's go to the resulting templates from this. So if you look at this template on the left, this is the basic one. I just put the, the fields in there and I put all the text and everything outside of the, of the field. Okay. So here you can see in the medications, there were a whole bunch of medications, so it overflowed that line and went into the next line. Same thing with the allergies. Here where it's got um, pinhole acuity, there was no value entered for there, um, but that text still shows up. Okay. And here there are two lines where the, the two rows for the third and fourth diagnoses that's, that isn't there, it, it still takes up that space. Okay. And here I had um, RTC, and for the reason I didn't have data in those fields, so that is still there, right? So it does a job, but you can make it look a lot nicer if you put some of those things into the actual merge field. So looking over at this one, what I did differently here is I made this part a table. Okay, so if there's a good chance that data is going to overflow, you might want to consider putting it in a table instead of just a line because that way it word wraps in this section dedicated to this part of the table. Yes. Okay. Over here there's no pinhole marks because I included that in the actual merge. If I go over here and edit this field, you can see that I put pinhole OD20 slash before the field merge. And then I put spaces, you can't see it because they're spaced, but I put spaces after it, okay, so that there would be separation between the two values if there was something in there. Same thing for um, BVA, so that that's these spaces here, all right? But if there's nothing in there, all of this will move to the left. Everything will shift to the left, okay? And under um, assessment, I've got no extra gap where the, here I, when I did it all online, there's no extra commas at the end. Go back to this one, you'll see, you'll see I've got two commas here where there would be the third and fourth um, diagnosis. If you plan ahead and think about how your output's going to be, where you're going to have, where are you, or places where you probably won't have data on, on a lot of patients or, or things like that, you can put it into the actual merge code and make it look nicer. Okay, so you've got your template made, and now you want to actually make, you know, a, a report or a document or whatever. 
So what you want to do is you go to um, the patient records and you want to go to the date um, you know, of the exam that's got the data that you want to make the report for. All right. And then there's two ways that you can do it. You can go to EHR settings and button commands, send to MS Word. But if you notice, this has this alternate plus zero. That's a shortcut. So the easier way, if you remember this, is to do alternate and zero. And either way, this, this um, box will pop up, and you just pick the template that you're wanting to do. This is the diabetic report. Okay. It opens up Word first with a template, and then it opens up the merge data. And now you can see the report that you want. And then you can save it, uh, print it, fax it, whatever you want to do with it. You can edit it in here if you want to uh, change something. Um, but that's all you have to do once you've got it made up. If you have a template that you want to do, um, like marketing letters, then you would go into reports and uh, make up a correspondence report, pick the features that you want to include, and then make up, um, generate the report, and then it will say um, uh, print to Word. And that's how you can get it out there. Okay, the, the last thing I'm going to talk about, I want to go to um, my contact lens um, patient record. This is for exporting medical records for somebody if they want the records sent somewhere. So it's got a whole bunch of fields on it. To me, the easiest way to do medical records fields is to go in and edit your medical records, find the field numbers that you want to put in there and write it down, make up a you know, a draft document and just write, fill in those numbers that you're going to need and then go in and edit the, uh, the merge field with that corresponding number. Because trying to go through that generated template, you'll go crazy trying to find the right fields. This particular, because it's so many fields, it's basically one huge table. Okay, and I've just turned off the borders except for places where I want lines and things. Okay, if you see this, at the end of my table, I put a row that's only one one high because a lot of times if a table is at the, uh, near the bottom of the page, it inserts a blank page and you can't, can't get rid of it. So if you put uh, uh, an added row that's only one high, that typically solves that problem.